Why? Hello there. I hope this moment finds you well, and perhaps a bit curious, as today we embark on an exploration that dances on the edge of physics and philosophy. Ever pondered the fabric of reality? It's a tapestry woven with threads finer than the laces of our own understanding, and one that's been tugged at by some of the most brilliant minds in history. Let's get comfortable and unravel this together, shall we? Now imagine the universe as a grand stage, vast and cloaked in the velvet darkness of the unknown. It is upon this stage that we find the Copenhagen interpretation, a principal actor in the drama of quantum mechanics, performing its enigmatic and counterintuitive scenes before our very eyes. The air around us thickens with the scent of mystery, the kind that has tickled the curiosity of thinkers and dreamers alike. What if I told you that the mere act of watching, of observing, could alter the play itself? That's the central question the Copenhagen interpretation posits. It's a heady notion, suggesting that particles exist in all possible states simultaneously until observed. Upon observation, they collapse into just one state. It makes you wonder, doesn't it, about the power of a gaze, the strength of attention, and the nature of reality itself. Now let's dive a little deeper into this philosophical ocean. Picture a small, ghostly quantum particle drifting through an endless sea of possibility. It's not just here or there, but in a superposition, a word that feels like a whispered secret, suggesting it's everywhere and nowhere, all at once. Until that is, we shine the light of our curiosity upon it, and like a startled shadow, it picks a place to stand. This notion, this stark transformation from the probable to the definite, it's like a magician revealing his trick, only the universe is the magician, and we're part of the act. Throughout the ages, thinkers such as Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg have left us breadcrumbs of wisdom. Bohr, with his words as ponderous as the atoms he studied, once said, everything we call real is made of things that cannot be regarded as real. Heisenberg, meanwhile, brought us the uncertainty principle, which tells us there's a limit to how well we can know the position and momentum of a particle. It's as if the universe enforces a privacy policy, guarding its secrets with a fundamental fuzziness. Now, let's step back into the corridors of history where this story intertwines with our own. During the 20th century, a time of roaring change and innovation, the philosophical underpinnings of the Copenhagen interpretation began to take shape. It was a period when the atom was split and the secrets of the cosmos were probed like never before. Through the lens of this interpretation, scientists saw the chaos of the quantum world and sought to make sense of it. And today, these ideas still challenge us to think differently about what it means to know something about the reality we share. Let's consider a case study that still sparks debate, the infamous Schrodinger's cat thought experiment. A cat, a flask of poison, and a radioactive atom all sealed in a box. According to the Copenhagen interpretation, until the box is opened and observed, the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. It's a moral and philosophical puzzle that stretches our understanding of life, death, and the nature of existence. This thought experiment isn't just a quirky tale of feline fate. It reflects the ethical implications and moral considerations inherent in the Copenhagen interpretation. It compels us to question the nature of reality and our role within it. What does it mean for something to be alive or dead, real or unreal, if it all hinges on the act of observation? It blurs the line between subject and object, between observer and the observed, and invites us to think about how our perceptions shape our reality. Culture, too, has been touched by these quantum curiosities. The ripples of the Copenhagen interpretation have traveled far beyond the chalk-smeared blackboards and cluttered laboratories into the world of art, literature, and film. Take, for example, the novel The Quantum Thief by Hanu Raniemi, where the very essence of being and memory is entwined with quantum states, or films like Coherence and Primer, which play with the idea of multiple realities and the uncertainty of our experiences. 
In today's heated cauldron of discourse, the Copenhagen interpretation remains as relevant as ever. It's the foundation upon which modern quantum physics is built, yet it's also the platform from which many dissenting perspectives leap. There are those who argue for a more deterministic universe, where things are irrespective of our meddling gazes, and others who propose even more exotic interpretations, like the many worlds theory, which suggests that all possible outcomes actually occur in separate parallel universes. And why does this matter to us now in our modern era? Because the Copenhagen interpretation isn't just about particles and probabilities, it's about knowledge and the nature of reality. It has implications for technology, for the computers that will shape our future, for the encryption that guards our deepest digital secrets. It's a testament to the idea that our quest for understanding is boundless, that the more we know, the more we realize how much there is to discover. As we weave together the threads of this philosophical journey, we find ourselves standing before a profound realization. The Copenhagen interpretation isn't just a set of rules for the quantum realm. It's a mirror reflecting our own complexities, the uncertainties of our lives, and the endless possibilities that lie before us. It questions the very nature of existence and whispers to us that perhaps reality is more malleable, more participatory than we ever imagined. And so, dear friends, I thank you for sharing this time with me, for pondering the imponderables and questioning the unquestionable. Philosophy, like a good conversation, thrives on the exchange of ideas, on the challenge of new perspectives. Now, as we part ways, I leave you with a few thoughts to turn over in your mind. What does it mean for something to exist only when it's observed? How do our perceptions shape the world around us? I encourage you to mull over these questions, to discuss them, to let them percolate in the rich grounds of your mind. Thank you truly for lending me your ears, for the privilege of your time. May your paths be paved with curiosity and your days filled with wonder. Remember, the universe is a stage and we are all both audience and actors. So go ahead, take a bow, and then play your part with passion. Until next time, keep looking up, keep thinking deep, and keep seeking the extraordinary in the ordinary. Goodbye for now.